Okay, even you have the right camera, you have the thermal camera, it is not going to help much if you don't know how to inject the power correctly into the board. Okay, so today is about the power cable. Which power cable you need to buy in order to fully utilize the thermal camera. So here I'm going to explain how the power cable will be affecting the thermal camera you're using. Okay, let's begin. Okay, hi, I'm Lim. So today we are going to talk about power supply cable for repairing the iPhone logic board. Okay, before you guys to buy the cable, the market have selling different kind of cable. You know, actually they are adding different when we are try to check the current from the power supply. This is really important episode that <laughs> after you get the thermal camera, you will find out not every problem you can detect with this. Okay, just because the power cable is one of the reason, and the other reason should be uh, you don't know how the circuit flow works and you don't know how to inject the power to some certain circuit. This episode is talking about we fixing the shot from the motherboard. So the power supply cable is very important. So be sure you buy the right one. Now I'm going to explain what's the difference. So first I show you. This is the one I don't recommend. It, this type. So you see, they usually have a, some kind of box and the chip or IC controller or something in middle here. So this kind of power supply, they usually, uh, normally they are, when you set to the 5.0, it will just come up an output for 4.0 or around like that. <sighs> Let me show you. Okay, now my power supply I set to. Let's see. Okay, let's see. I set to two point oh first. Okay, if I measure his output, if I measure his output, I don't get any voltage at all. You see, it's zero. Okay, if I raise it. Let's say the battery level 3.8. I measure. I still get, don't get anything. See that? Okay, I get nothing. All right. So I give to at least 5.0, and then I measure. You see, he output. He is doing 4.0 output. So. What does it mean is because let's say if the shot is not full shot or they have a certain IC that will get hit first, immediately the the thermal cam will detect that spot is over I mean mm, the brightness is just overcome the original problem. The brightness, okay? You will affect the contrast of the display. Of your thermal camera display. Uh, let me show you then. So I make an example here. So this is the thermal camera that I very recommended you you buy it. Okay. So now we look at the board here. Okay. So it seems nothing, nothing short at first. So once we plug in the power, you can see immediately, immediately there's a spot to get hit. The brightness is overcome all the surrounding. This is what I mean. This is not okay. So let's say I turn off again, okay. So it becomes normal, right? Now I'll show you again. So if I try to inject 1.0, 1.7 like this, you can see the thermal cam totally not detecting anything. He did it. 
the board doesn't draw any power at all because the the cable itself the output is fixed okay so now i keep raising the power until three point something is still doing nothing and un un until i give him a 5.0 which is the cable needed let's say i go to 5.0 you see immediately it gets shot like this so you can't detect a shit so this is the you see the if i turn it off here's the original problem here is the original problem okay we already detected we already found it before we record the video so now i use this cable to put the power in as you can see the cable is not doing anything unless i give him a 5.0 immediately the brightness like this so this is why this kind of cable not recommended totally not recommended okay now i'm going to use a second type of cable that he can control the power manually i usually call this cable is a uh, direct the cable that can direct the power without any any controller chip or things like that okay so i'll just plug in this is the one i use now i have two this kind two different they are both two different cable this is made by mega idea all right So this kind of cable, I call it direct because let's say if I give him a 1.0, let's say let's say 1.5 like this, and then I measure. You see, 1.48 I get if I set to 1.5. It is what we call direct power. You understand, right? Let's say I want to become 2.3. Okay. Then I measure again. You can see two point three. So this is what I call direct. It supply the power directly. So then we can control the voltage. I mean, slowly raise the voltage. So then you can use the thermal camera to detect the problem in better way. All right. So now back to the. The camera part. Let's say just now we found the problem is on top, but we don't know which one. But by using a direct cable, we can find out already. Okay. So now we look at the board. Nothing shot until I give him a certain voltage. So this is the minimum minimum shutting voltage, two point one. He already draw the power. So. The place get hot is a boost IC, so this is not a problem. And on top, you see the blindness. You see there's a spot get blind. And then raise later again, you can see that spot is the problem, is the actual problem. Then I get it hotter. You see, the spot is getting bigger. So make us hard to detect which capacitor is the problem. This is why we need to lower the voltage in order to see this. Some people that say it's very really hard to detect some uh, minor leaking. Actually, you, you, you still can detect the minor leaking even the 10 MA. As long as you know how to blinking, you know how to do the blinking. What I mean blinking is I raise the voltage high low, high low like that. You need, I let you see, like this. Can you see the blinking? This is what I mean. So if you can do this trick, you can find out a lot of the, the actual problem. All right. So now let's continue to fix this. Since I already know the problem is on top, just use the microscope to see it. Okay. All right. Let's continue to fix this board.
So now that we already fixed the problem, I will show you to turn on the device again. Mm. Okay. So now I raise the power until 2.3, 2.5, still nothing short. So this is why manually control the voltage is very important. I raise it again. Okay, so this 3.8 or 2.9 will be enough. So now I try to press the power button for once and see the response for read the current from the power supply. Okay, this is what we call normal response. It is working good. Once we see the response is good, it's normal. We put in the board. We put the board into the housing and try to turn it on. Now I'm going to show you, even this type of cable has a weakness. So I plug in the cable on it, supplying a 4.0 output, and turn it on. Okay, so the phone is able to turn on. The problem of this cable is only have a... I plug in the PC and you will understand. The only weakness of this kind of cable is like this. They cannot read the battery data. They don't have the battery data chip. So now, I, now we are looking at the iPhone information. Now we are reading this phone battery life no data and click on these details we don't see the actual capacity because power cable itself don't have the battery data if we're using the cable like this we won't be able to fully test the phone because the phone will restart itself so this is why i also need the second type of the cable but also not the the first one i show you so now I show you the second type of cable that is come with the battery data. Okay. The second cable that look <coughs> similar. Also from, come from the same company. Let me show you the connector. Okay. So this is the cable I use just now. This is the cable I normally use it to testing the phone by turning on and testing the features because it come with the battery data here. As you can see the protein part here is some kind of resistor okay. and this cable is the direct power but doesn't come with the battery data this one come with battery data come with battery data but also a direct power we can directly control the voltage now plug on it Turning on the device. Okay. Now plug in the PC. Battery life 100%. I click it. You can see it tricks the phone to saying it has a battery. It has a Apple battery connected. So then the system won't be rebuilt itself anymore. We can test all the other features like this. The conclusion means in outside the market they have a three type of cable. So the first one is the rubbish that I show you. I will list some of the cable that I'm not recommended you to buy. So okay. I personally use three type of cable, so this is also one of my cable. This one is supplying direct voltage. As you can see, it's come with four USB port. We can control the voltage manually with this one. And you can buy, let's say if you don't have an iPhone 11 series cable, you can just buy one and then use it. And it also come with this kind of port. Let's say if your power supply is fully digital, 
is not analog you might need this this cable is actually come with this meter so you can connect to here so then you can read the current from analog meter so I recommended you have one is direct voltage like this the second type of cable should have battery information so it doesn't cause the iPhone to be reboot so then you can test all the function with your power supply uh, I forgot to tell you that if you use the cable that is uh, with battery information that kind is not suitable for you to diagnose the shot uh, you might kill the cable in the process if you want to diagnose shutting you should use direct like this okay <laughs> only use these two would be enough this is not expensive this type of cable is not expensive it should be uh, about 10 USD I believe so in the conclusion <coughs> choosing a right cable is very important for the thermal camera if you don't have the right cable even you have the camera it, not, it is not going to help much this is only do 50% of your work so you still need to find a way to inject the power correctly there are still many tricks in order to fully utilize the thermal camera especially when you have a CPU booting issue okay the problem is not only limited on the cable issue the problem always is how do you inject the power how do you know the sequence of the motherboard how does it boot up so and then you use thermal camera to see the sequence of heating area there is not many academy that are teaching you to detect the problem by using the thermal camera uh, we are one of the first to develop this kind of training and education of how to use a thermal camera combined with other tools to detect the problem so then you don't need the schematic to fix a lot of problems uh, especially last few days I repaired few iPad Pros and because those iPad is uh, we, we couldn't find a schematic for it that's why by having a thermal camera is really important we just turn it on and see where it stop you know the heating area sequence and we, we can already guess okay this how the power come and goes okay guys so that's it for the shining see you guys next time bye